mutiny that occurred upon his ship. Eric Common, oh, Eric Weiss will be giving us a manual speech that will be 12 to 14 minutes. Here he is. Bjorn. Yeah. I am the best archer in this raiding party. I am the strongest and I am the bravest. I demand the right to be king. And you, Leif Erikson, are in my way. Step aside. I challenge you to single combat. Well, Bjorn, <laughs> you think you're the strongest and the bravest and the best archer, huh? Well, let me just make an observation here. I have a wife who's given me six kids. Two of them are big, strong, strapping warriors. And should you kill me in single combat, it is not only their right, but their obligation to hunt you down and to exact revenge upon you, probably in the middle of the night, when you're sleeping, when you can't defend yourself, when you have no armor and you have no shield. You, on the other hand, well, you've had a lot of women in your life, but you haven't settled down with any of them. You don't have any children, or at least no legitimate children. <laughs> it's not likely that any of your kids that you haven't acknowledged are going to feel the need to come forth and avenge your honor, since you've never acknowledged them. Nonetheless, I demand single combat right now! Well, let me point out one other thing before we jump into this single combat business. You claimed earlier that you were the strongest, and that you were the bravest, and that you were the best archer. I don't think so. Of course I am! But why don't you prove it? Why don't we have a contest, and the winner of that contest in those three areas can choose who the next king will be. Uh, you know, I think you're afraid. That's why you're hesitating. I am not afraid. I will take you up on this. I will have this contest. I will prove that I deserve to be king. And the winner gets to decide who's king. Yes, that's right. Okay. So Leif Erikson went down onto the beach where there was a flock of geese, and he snuck through the woods with his bow and his arrow, and he got as close as he could. And when he got close enough and he didn't want to disturb the geese, he bent down, took a shot, and shot one of the geese, one of the goose. I don't know how to say that. I practiced so many times. <laughs> one of the geese goose died. But the other started taking off, and so quickly he took three more arrows and shot at him and knocked one more out of the sky. And then he said, Sparta, my faithful Labrador, go out and get that extra one that's floating out there in the water. And the dog came bounding up, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, dogs don't talk, but that's the way they talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he went zipping on out, swimming out, brought in the second goose. And the men started taking the goose and starting to prepare them for goose stew, one of their favorites. So Bjorn said, how am I gonna beat this? I know. There's a walrus about a hundred yards from shore. I'm gonna take down that walrus. Never in the history of this raiding party has one person been able to take down a walrus as one person only. So he climbed up on the rocks, he's about a hundred yards out, and he drew back and he shot. And the arrow landed at about 75 yards. And so he tried again, took another arrow out, aimed a little higher, shot again. It was about at 90 yards. And as he looked out, it looked like the walrus didn't care at all about this lone Viking trying to shoot at him. It looked like the walrus was almost laughing. And that made Bjorn even angrier. So in quick succession, he took the rest of his arrows and shot him out there, and three of them hit the walrus. But it takes a lot more than three hits to kill a walrus. The walrus just threw himself in the water and swam away, leaving a little bloody trail, but no carcass for anybody to eat. And even if he had died, it would have taken about 10 Sparta dogs to chase on out there and drag that huge walrus back. So anyway, some of the men were fairly impressed that three out of his shots had hit. And so then Leif Erikson said, well, time for the next test. So he went over and picked a tree in the forest that was about this size. And Leif Erikson took out his sword and he whacked that tree about a quarter of the way through. He wrestled out a sword and hit it again, and hit it again. And about 20 different shots with a sword, finally, the tree fell over. 
and the men immediately ran out to the tree to start shaving the branches and creating a big bonfire for their goose stew. Well, Bjorn said, I can beat that. Watch this. And he took his sword out and he went and he found this big boulder that was right in the middle of the beach. And he smashed that boulder, putting a tiny little crease in it. And he smashed it, and a little chip flew off. And he got angry, realizing he wasn't accomplishing very much. So he started beating it and smashing it. And for an entire hour, he was smashing this boulder until his sword was a wreck. And then one of the guys started laughing and saying, you're never going to beat that rock to death. It's already dead. Give up. And he got so angry and so upset that he reached down with his last remaining strength and grew the strength of ten men out of his heart and smashed that rock one final time and his sword went flying into ten pieces all over the beach. But that rock actually cracked and fell apart. And the men said, wow, that's impressive. Good job, Bjorn. And Leif Erikson didn't say anything. He said, okay, now it's time for the third test. And the third test is for bravery. We'll see how you do on this one, Bjorn. And he walked on over to the raging fire where the men had made out of the tree and where they were making their goose stew. And he took off his gauntlet and he put it into the fire right where the flames were. And the flames were coming up and they started to burn a little hole in Leif Erikson's hand. And you could see some smoke was coming up. And pretty soon there was a big blood blister. And then it popped and blood started spurting out. And about that time, Leif Erikson said, ah, ran on over and shoved his hand into the ice to cool it down. He said, OK, let's see how you do, Bjorn. Bjorn said, no sweat. And he took off his gauntlet. And instead of putting in the flames, he shoved it down right into the coals and grabbed one of the coals. And he started screaming with the pain of it. But he kept it down there for two minutes until, until the arm was on fire and the skin was peeling off. And then he ran and he shoved his hand into the snow. It said, I'm the winner. I'm the bravest. I get to be king. And Leif Erikson said, well, hold your horses here. Let's take a look at what happened here. OK, first of all, there's no question that three out of the 10 arrows that you shot did hit that walrus, but none of us got to benefit from it. The walrus swam away, which is what walruses do, which is why no one's ever been able to single-handedly kill a walrus. On the other hand, two of my shots took down two geese gooses, and now we're actually benefiting. The entire party here is having a nice feast. I don't care! Three of my shots hit, not two! Well, that's true. So let's look at what we did for strength. For strength, I chopped down a tree so we could all have some warmth. And we're actually cooking our goose stew. You, on the other hand, you foolishly beat that rock to death. <laughs> and he was dead. And that was incredible strength. But where's your sword? It's lying in 10 pieces on the ground. You deprived all of us of a member of our team that's very valuable. You've been a strong captain for us now. You have no sword. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I won. I won. All right, well, let's look at the third one about bravery. I know my limits, and within my limits, I did the absolute best I could to show everybody in this tribe how brave I was. You, on the other hand, were reckless. You actually fried your hand. <laughs> you're going to have to sit there in the ice for 14 hours to avoid shock. You'll be lucky if you're alive. If your hand does heal in two, it'll take two or three months before you can even hold a shield again. Oh, it doesn't matter. You gave me the turns. I beat you in all these terms. And he said, OK, well, I tried to show you how you've been foolish, but let me uh, point out one other thing. You can be king, but you'll only be king for an hour. We ain't king for an hour. Well, in one hour when you're king, you're king of the right of single combat. In one hour, I'm going to challenge you to single combat. And when you come running at me with your sword, oh, geez, you don't have a sword anymore. Your sword is in ten pieces over on the beach. Well, maybe you can defend yourself with your shield. Oh, no, but you don't have a shield arm anymore. You can't defend yourself. Well, I know. You can run down at the beach and fire me with your arrows. Oh, but you shot all of your arrows. In one hour, you're facing certain death if you choose to be king. You tricked me! You tricked me! 
Well, of course I tricked you. This job doesn't just demand strength. It just doesn't demand good archery. This job isn't just for the bravest. You have to be a savant. You have to be smart. Where have you been all these years? Have we always had the biggest party when we attacked? No, we've had to taunt our enemy to come out from their defensive fortifications so that we could hit them from a flank attack. Sometimes we've had to hire spies. We've sent them in to find out where the enemy is strongest and attack where they're weakest. On occasion, we've had them open up in the middle of the night the back gate so we can sneak in and take one of the enemy's fortresses and slaughter the entire garrison while they're sleeping. There's other times the enemy has rushed at us and we feigned a retreat and we've run away so that some unorganized unit is sent to attack us thinking that we're easy prey and then we ambush them. Kill them all! Cunning. Being a savant, these are four small multipliers. There's only 20 of us. If we didn't use these things, we'd be dead already. Nonetheless, I want to be, I want to be king. Well, you're just being vexatious right now. <laughs> I can tell you this. You've got a choice to make. You can be king for an hour and spend the rest of eternity in the Elysian fields thinking how stupid you were, or you can choose to heal. And in two or three months, you can be captain again. You'll be able to hold a shield. We'll get you a new sword from the next campaign. And we'll get you some new arrows. And we will do what we have done so far. We will conquer everybody that we face. We will acquire wine and women. And we know how much you like women. And more wine and more women and more wealth and more land. In fact, they will sing songs about us, songs throughout the ages of Leif Erikson and his Captain Bjorn. It wouldn't surprise me if a thousand years from now, Grown men sit in a tiny room talking about us. <laughs> so, your choice is fame for an hour and eternal death, or be my captain, wine, women, song, fortune, fame. So, Bjorn, what is your choice? Fellow Toastmasters, if you were Bjorn, what would your choice be? Yeah. Captain, captain.